Salutations everyone and welcome back to TNO, the last days of Europe in which we're playing as the Divine Mandate of Siberia. Right now, we can choose another focus. Last time we went through this part of the focus tree, and we did a little bit of this part, so let's go ahead and do Christian egalitarianism. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. Ephesians 5.31 Let the word of the Lord flow through your willing ears and imbue your soul with faith and reason. This he declares from your tongues, that man and woman are one and the same, restricting them from their heart's desire purely because of their sex's persecution akin to the tyrannies Nero meted upon the church fathers and their flock. As his servant, Father men shall enforce the equality God has ordained between the two sexes. No longer shall either be shackled to centuries of misguided tradition. Total service equality, 50% more recruitable population factor. <clears throat> While we lose some stability and some more support, so be it. But we have a couple comments to go through as well. Ooh, right now we could do some stuff here, but eh, it's okay. I just realized that uh, we are very white here, and the Siberian Black Army, or Siberian Free Territory is very black. I like the little contrast of colors between here. It's kind of nice. Now, this part of Russia, they don't know what color c contrast is, or, you know, it doesn't look too great, but this kind of looks kind of cool. It's a very dark, very light, uh, battle for Siberia, or at least this part of Siberia. And once we do this one, I do want to do a truly holy Russia as soon as possible. So, friendship between all peoples. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek, for the same Lord is Lord of all, bestowing his riches on all who call on him. Romans 10, 12. <clears throat> Yahweh, Allah, Bog, the Lord's God, comes in every language and has ever descended from the Tower of Babel. For it was written that everyone who calls upon his name will be saved. Truly, his mercy knows no limits. If all nations can seek salvation through their own tongues, it will. The kingdom shall respect the Lord's covenant with the Lord's other nations and races. For as long as our men draw breath, no harm shall befall them within his dominion or without. Within his dominion or without. Removes the current administrative strain on our state. Which is probably pretty good. So, Wales unifies with England. Did they just go... Uh, okay with that? Were they okay with that? Nash has been quick to denounce the move. But, okay. Wales, I guess they... There was a peaceful reunification. Wow. Usually I see England probably have to butt heads with the you know, Welsh, but okay, why not? So, a couple comments. First of all, someone said, look how good we're doing here. Oh my goodness. That I should, probably should have taken, let none go naked and then communal farming just so they can get some more equipment, societal development, instead of agriculture. Normally I agree with you, but the only reason I did that is because I always choose equipment. And even though equipment is probably the best thing we could choose. I always choose I wanted to do, I wanted to go agricultural just to get something a little different, so I like to get to modern agriculture. I could have done that so we can get things done faster, but you know it is what it is. I would like to hire more foreign instructors because you normally don't get that. However, if there's ever a poverty thing that I believe that does increase your GDP growth. So that's pretty good to do. So I'm gonna hire foreign instructors because I think that's pretty good to do. <clears throat> and we do get some army speed, but Italy joins the OFN. Wow. The free nation's just gotten bigger. Major victory for the free world. That is definitely a major victory for the free world. When Italy, of all places... Wow, that looks really cool. Italy goes all the way down to the Horn of Africa. Wowzers and Bowsers. Holy cow. And, of course, I guess Central Africa kind of exploded, but that's okay. Currently, what are we building? Some more civilian factories, which would be great. And we only have a billion in terms of deficit. That's all. A truly holy Russia. They shall speak of the glory of your kingdom and tell you tell you or tell of your power to make known to the children of man your mighty deeds <clears throat> and the glorious splendor of your kingdom your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and your dominion endures throughout all generations the lord is faithful in all his words and kind in all his works psalm 145 11 to 13. From the snowy tundras of Siberia emerges a kingdom without an earthly king for what crown or tiara shines brighter than Ieso Pantocrator Within its bounds spreads Christendom without Christian ornaments. Gold crosses, silver trolls, jewel-crusted domes inspires all ill-gotten wealth, power, and prestige. Washed from the church like the sinful before Noah's flood, and like sturdy bedrock, all that remains are articles of genuine, unshakable faith. And through its people blossom godliness without godly hubris. Walk the streets of Alamon, Amalon, and behold the fruits of our evangelism. A house for every family, three square meals for every mouth, unshackled from vice and buttressed by community, many women akin or alike, now live productive, happy, and peaceful lives under the Lord's guidance. As the first rays of sunlight grace God's kingdom, a father prays in the altar. Cool. Yeah. Through a glass darkly? Yes, of course. More political power, stability. And now we shall really call ourselves 
Well, I'll call myself Father Mocha Lover. I can't even remember if I said that earlier on. I should have said that if I didn't, so. Father Mocha Lover here. And we must look to the west and defeat the Siberian Free Territory, which they're probably still making more divisions than us. Ah, actually, not too much more. That's not too bad, then. That's really not too bad. I kind of wish we'd get this done a little bit faster, but we'll be done in September, which is quite a while. So be it. Whatever. A truly holy Russia. Hmm. After that, the fruits of labor. Oh, we have to go through this part of the focus tree first anyways. The pole man. Better poverty monthly change as well as industrial expertise. Oh, boy. Blessed are the peacemakers. Oh, necessary sin. Army professionalism goes down by 0.5 a month. That's not cool. But a sin nonetheless. Ooh. Get more political power gain. Lose recruitable population. Enforce humanity. Less minus 15% attack. Total supervision. Oh, boy. An army of the faithful. That's cool. An army of the righteous. Ooh, basic training. Army professionalism goes up, though. Huh. The three temptations of the sinner. The temptations of sin. Oh, yeah. There was a comment from yesterday saying that don't let Sudaplatov get too much influence. Yeah. Delete the division template and remove all units created from that. Leash the wolves. Ooh, you do get... Eh, that one's okay. There's only one judge. That's kind of cool. But let's go ahead and read through a glass dock leaf. In the days of the Hebrew children, God approaches chosen, appearing in vast whirlwinds and melting snows with his holy light. But with the ascent of Christ, these miracles were no, no longer in abundance. So the father prayed, as he always had done, for guidance, just as the prophets had done. The voice of God within him spilled through the small spaces of the heart. A smiling woman nursing her son in the light of a church's medical bay. A peasant rebuilding a torn down tenement with the aid of smiling worker priests. A repentant sinner anointing the world with joy in the godless nations of the west where the tyrants yet reigned in their delusions. These and more the father prayed for. His heart, like an ab alabaster jaw, spilled open to intercession and to revival should it prove necessary. Not long, though. Had he prayed, before he was shown the testament, even Paul had not been offered in all his years of service. The Lord brought his eyes to a pool, somewhere in a deep forest, and as he looked, he cried out, for the image he beheld in its reflection was none other than the Christos uh, Pantocrator, Emperor of the Universe, the Triumph of David. His voice spoke syllables at one with the speech of angels as he had trembled, and the warm touch of the Savior embraced him, not in judgment but in love. Come, my servant, the Lord whispered, look again, and the image of the pool was none other than that of his own father. I love you, he whispered, and then the father was father no longer, but Alexander Men. The burning-eyed boy who loved his parents and God with a zeal fierce enough to make to shake the heavens themselves. He reached out, and he, as he touched the face, it became his own. The father rose in a cold sweat, his ears ringing with the touch of the divine, and he whispered, Blessed is the lion whom the man shall devour, that the lion shall become man, and a curse is the man whom the lion shall devour, and the lion shall become man. The fruits of labor. History teaches, teaches us that at the heart of every community is a healthy spirit. Russia itself is like a village. To succeed, it requires selfless and pure people. We have many workers, but many of them sin, oblivious to the corruption their acts bring upon society. But Russia is also large, so we have no effective way of rooting out all sinners. Therefore, every village shall be ordered to fast, to contribute its wealth for our cause, as a way to punish the impure. With sufficient acts of goodwill, the spirit of Russia will mend, dispel petty attractions to material wealth, and substitute for them a sense of responsibility. We get the pole man event a good minimum wage and an eight hour workday cool a good mi minimum wage you say minimum wage is currently low which is probably not great so in construction spending factor 100 percent we get to good minimum wage which monthly poverty rate does go up as well as industrial expertise we do spend more on construction which is fine whatever we lose a little bit of efficiency cap which is fine whatever max factors in and say actually goes down but we do get five percent more stability so all in all, it's a give and take. Cut. Spend more. So we can make things and get more political power, which would be a very good thing. And it's almost September. Uh, yearning for the... Remembering. Remember the yearning for bread. Oh, that looks so good. Oh, yeah. We'll probably do that one. Oh, let's do this one first. So remember the Sermon on the Mount. Uh, academic and poverty rate. That would be pretty good. because Proportional GDP costs. I don't like that one a lot, but, you know, we'll have to do that. Let's go and grab a preemptive strike. Cool, my friends. Very good. Remember the Sermon on the Mount. In eons past, the Lord's Son spoke to the people of Earth, and he said to be kind, to share wealth, and be thankful for what you have. The socialists, the product of a failed world, have something, something's right. Namely, the holy directive to prioritize community over the wants of the mind. Academic base, uh, as well as the other one, poverty rate will increase. The poor man. One day, Father Alexander was invited to the village of 
Zashishishin Bogum, which means protected by God for the harvest festival. There, the villagers welcomed his intercessor with a bountiful feast and fine, colorful raiment. Man, woman, and child rejoiced in their liberator's wake, grasping at his robes for some measure of the divine energy its linen had soaked. The village elders themselves offered their own hall, twice taller than any other building in Zashishishishishishin Bogum, for the father to rest his hand or his head and say sate his hunger in. It was then that he noticed a, sma a man in tattered robes just outside the village gates. On the oil or soil caked arms was a woven basket full of steamed potatoes. Imploring eyes glinted past his shambled locks, and the passive crowd that stood at least ten paces away from him. Intrigued, Father Man asked an elder, Who is that man outside your palisades? And why does he not dare seek re refuge with him? A trifling matter, Father, replied the old man. We ha here have learned not to bother with Igor the Mad. That he'd lost his wife and children sat in us, but his grief is no excuse for slovenly appearances. Then the elder guided the father to the hall, but his hand met empty air. For the father was halfway through the hall, and Yegor, when the elders and villagers gathered their wits, one shouted, what are you, Where are you going, father men? Without glancing back, he said, Why, to partake in the blessings of Yegor, son of God? My belly shall be sated by his humble feast, and my clothes shall be kept dry by the thatch of his roof. Keep your stone walls and suckled pigs. The Lord has no use for blessings. He cannot share to all. So was the village humbled of its pride. Cool. And we still have Kutsk. It's kind of nice. I like having Kutsk. Revitalize this stuff. Yep. When do we go to war with these guys? After 69. Nice. Very nice. As it should be. Yeah, if I can prevent the cost going up too high, that would probably be good. Ooh, await judgment. We shall face judgment for our sins. I, was, I think someone said that we could do at least one of these. That increases Sudapotov's influence. So, hopefully that'll be okay. Security service, more daily political power, more cost. There's only one judgment. Leash the wolves. Cast the wolves out. Hmm. We'll do the joys of charity, though. Probably. Uh, proportional GDP cost. Ooh, yeah, we are spending. going to be spending a lot of money. 6%, 9%, 6%. Eh, I'll do this one. The world is not a just place. There exist those who do not have but cannot have. The disadvantaged number in the thousands. Poor men and women without jobs. Shunned by society. But the pious follower must remember that what the Lord has said. The great decree to share and take only what is needed. One pleasure we can allow our sinful mind is that of giving. For through gifts we nurture the community. Feed those who cannot feed themselves and become better people. Yeah, the cost is definitely going to go up, but that's okay. No cost is too great for the Lord's people, right? Oh, 1.3 billion, basically. Ooh. <laughs> oh. Oh, boy. Well, that'll be all okay once we can improve our poverty rate a little bit more. 50 to 80% is quite a bit. You get more monthly population, but we do lose research speed because of that. Yeah, 10 a month is rapidly improving. Not bad. Hey, better, better agricultural methods. Good. Without food, men may not work, and without work, government simply ceases to exist. The bureaucracy that has sustained is evaporating in a matter of weeks. However, the inverse is also true. With more food comes more plenty and the formation of ever more complex states. After all, were not the first states formed with the creation of agriculture? New agricultural methods will reduce the amount of labor of hard labor actually needed on the fields and the shifted the workloads to mechanized equipment like tractors and automated harvesters. Advances in fertilizer allows crops to grow quicker and cheaper. Man will have food and will be plenty. For this bread we thank thee. Better division training time, better monthly population, more recruitable population factor, less consumer goods, more output. This is why I wanted agriculture finally. It's pretty good. Alright, so it's 67. We can grab this. Let's grab this as well, because civilian construction 3. We are lacking quite a bit in industry. But since we have this, we could do that. Increases GDP. I'm not seeing anything for poverty here. So, let's see. Ooh, consolidate corporations. That's okay. This one's okay as well. Minus 10% consumer goods would actually not be too bad. So, industry expertise. I like the bonus to industry for blueprints. Research, education. Well, I don't see anything for agriculture either, so let's go import heavy machinery. <clears throat> Let's see, and then look to Tolstoy. Christian anarchism. Ooh, what do we choose? Of course, all the following, but let's remember the yearning for bread. The land is shattered, the people are dying, but the Father shall save holy Russia. Lift it from a pit of idleness and place it onto a road of heaven. Through the road of diligence, humanity subsists on bread, a simple and pure food. We cannot forget that. To get bread, one must work. There is no reward for those who do not contribute. To foster a sense of spirituality and hard work, the fathers ordered local priests to administer the townsfolk. Guide them on a path to labor so that they may live, find meaning in life, find salvation in meaning. Very cool. And we can only get 0.87 political power a day. So be it. That is not bad. And has the cost gone up yet? 18. Not bad. 18 out of 20. Yes, it definitely has. Oh my goodness. 
but that is no matter. No matter, no matter, no matter. Let's see, there was one comment from saying that I did say I want to play as a unifier that can eventually use helicopters, and someone did recommend I play as a People Revolutionary Council, which the person said they might start with helicopters, which sounds really, really cool. Marine defense, using Marines in Siberia would be cool and all, but we're going to go with air support, because we get the ground support, so that'd be nice. So yeah, maybe I'll check them out sometime, too. Look to Kuro Kuropotkin. Hey, the dam's all officially done. Congratulations. Let's see. Economy of mutual aid. Less consumer goods. Less resources to market, though, but to get better cap. Libertarian socialism versus despotism. Christian anarchism or resource efficiency gain, retention base, and factory output plus 15%. Ooh. Hmm. 31%. As long as we're still having the major amount of influence here. That's all that matters to me. Ooh. What do we want? We want to read this. Go right ahead. Christian anarchism. Destruction of social morals. Huh. Despotism? I kind of like this one, though, because I like the consumer goods. The wolves of Russia stand for ideology that would rip apart the village, drown the common man in pollution, while forcing him to work in gulags and company towns. Forgotten Kuropotkin, a philosopher from the days of the empire, used to advocate for a system of anarchism where the settlements dictated their own future, not some far-off government. By God's will, we shall grant additional autonomy to the villages until they are able to function as autonomous organs by handling or handing the peasants' power. We are fulfilling God's will. A man must choose, in the light of the Lord, to succeed or to fail. Passion and faith will cover up the flaws of anarchism. Oh, man. Hmm. Oh, look at that. Good, good, good. Allocation of all this other stuff. Basic literacy. A man chooses a slave obeys. That's what I was trying to think of. Basic literacy. Eh, that seems okay. More output. Research facilities were in rudimentary. Outdated. We get better research people. We lose political power, which eh, I'm not really okay with that. Mass mechanization is not bad. Poverty. Yeah, this one's okay. Nascent industrial base. Eh. So, if you improve that, it's still not bad. So, it doesn't really matter which one we choose, in my mind. For this one, we get a military factory, but that could cost more for stuff. Infrastructure can help us build things faster, though. Yeah. Hmm. Well, we'll just do education. Scientific research, education, expertise. You know, I'll, I'll do expertise, because we get a bonus to industry. Why not? I don't really want to choose that, but that's totally okay. And all these things must have adequate roads. Godly roads. Heavenly roads, we should probably say. Wow, deficit oh, it spiked up to 3.3 billion. Woof. That is, uh, wow. But no king but God. The tyrants of the world would call themselves lords, presidents, trivial titles that mean only one thing, that some men are more important than others. Here, however, here in Siberia, we shall absolve the sin of power through the faith in the Lord. There are none above God, he who, who creates and destroys, commands the seasons, and dictates the afterlife. Petty leaders of earth will quicken fear when they go to meet their maker, but our society is holy, responsible, ruled by none other than consciousness. We bow to none but the Lord himself. Beautiful. And, let's see, all trade unions allowed more stability, more efficiency cap, Less output, but we get better monthly poverty change as well as industrial expertise monthly change. Not bad. Oh yeah, we already chose that. I wanted to choose this. And slash, slash. I know this hurts out the budget, but this way we get more consumer goods and we're going to build, 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 build. There we go. Good. Four, one. Actually, we just built one more, so that should have gone down at least a teensy bit. So we have 98% stability, 95% war support. So taking this would be kind of a waste. So we're not going to do that. No king but God. We, I will do this eventually, but... Uh, uh, you know what? I'll probably do that immediately. Just because this is nice and all... And this does help an army of professionalism as well, but the three temptations of the syndrome. One of the first to join Father Man was a man known as Sudapotov, a former adherent of Yagod and the NKVD's teachings. He has left them to follow the word of the law, or the word of the Father. Despite leaving his old masters behind him, Sudapotov still practices their methods in the troubles, and this troubles the Father. There is no denying that his men are effective on the battlefield, and he has many connections to those who may help our cause, but Father Men sees his conduct as barbarous and unchristian. By working closely with Sudapotov, we might be able to bring the Father's word to all of Russia, but we must be careful. Uh, to not lose sight of our values if we do. Just as Jesus faced a temptation during his 40 days in the desert, Father Man must now face the temptations of power placed before him. A skeptic job. Father Alexander took with him three disciples to 
on the lawn square. He gestured at the faithful going about their day at the markets brimming with fruits and cuts of meat, at the trees and open blue sky risen above concrete gray facades. Tell me, Stefan Artem Kuzma, he said, to whom shall we give credit for the prosperity we see? Surely tis your strength, father, rhetorically asked Stefan. It takes no small fortitude to endure Sabir's climbs and emerge a war victor against all odds. Never to miss words, Artem chided. Are you daft, Stefan? Did the prophet not say that the strongest are those with knowledge and wisdom? Then should stand to reason that the father's intellect had borne the fruits around us. Kuzma offered his own thoughts after Stefan and Artem exhausted themselves. I find it hard to believe Father, uh, father Alexander would have succeeded without gift of gab. We petty men are nothing without his heavenly touch words. It was then that a small eavesdropper moseyed onto their dialogue. The child looked the father's robed figure up and down and said, You look fat and dumb and clumsy. <laughs> Father Alexander let out a hearty chuckle while he ruffled the grunt's raven mop. Then you are wiser than three of my disciples put together. He turned towards bristling uh, Stefan, Artem, and Kuzma after shooting the child off. Remember the Lord's teachings, you three, the father continued. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. My brawn, brains, and tongue are merely branches for supple fruits. Thus shall we give thanks not to any earthly king or prophet, but to the king of kings in heaven alone. So were three wise men made to learn. Up front, triumphant. He sat in an old wood chair, his eyes glued to the clock. Tick, tock, tick, tock. Back and forth, every grueling... Pain motion reminding him of what he had ordered, what was at stake. Far away, guns roared and men and shells fell alike, men dying for what he had ordered. Around him, those who he trusted most sat in the similar science, the air full of tension, every mustached face fixed on Tucha Tukhachevsky. Then a ring, trembling one, picked up the phone, listening very carefully, all could he see him relax, every clenching muscle unclenching, every pressure point releasing, the man on the other and waited for an answer after what seemed like a quite a long time and was given one. Good. Tukhachevsky will be impressed. The messenger stood up and gave the good news. The operation had been overwhelming success. Soldiers of the front had routed on again border guards and military units successing, succeeding in capturing border posts, men, and material with little loss of life of their own. The tension evaporated as all of, all of a sudden a great heavy fog had lifted over the operations room. Many tried to hide relieved sighs, but almost all gave in to this good news. A quiet murmuring broke out between grinning, wide-eyed faces, but was quickly silenced as a man himself stood up. Rising revealed a vintage vo bottle of vodka, one he had kept underneath his desk since the front had been betrayed and defeated, as well as many cups for each one man in the room. As he poured it into each glass without looking up, he said, Comrades, it is my armor to honor to stand in front of those who had stood by the motherland at every turn, and now the great victory, I believe their efforts now may pay off. Now we celebrate. On the note, he each gulped down the glasses and cheered to a new Russia, a much-needed victory. This will increase the influence of Mikhail Tukhachevsky by a large amount. I don't think we're supposed to get this event. That's the literal opposite side of Russia, but I will take one treasure. I will gladly take it, and I did not know we had West Russian Revolutionary Front influences here in the Divine Mandate of Siberia, but hey, we learn stuff every day. Yes, look at this one. It slightly increases GDP growth. Our poverty rate societal development will slowly improve. I always have to choose that one, because now, 22, which is good, but we have... 5.7. One that does complete, we'll have it a little higher, hopefully. So that'll be good. In 40 days, poverty, 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 poverty. 12.75 every month. That's not good enough, but we will deal with it. 38 days, and then Sudaplatov's men. One of the greatest thugs. Oh, independence for UAE. Wow. One of the greatest boons Sudaplatov can offer to our righteous cause are his old connections with the NKVD. Though the NKVD was a cruel atheistic organization that abused the peoples of Russia, its members had an advanced understanding of warfare managing a modern army. These men already proved their devotion to our cause during the struggle to unite Eastern Siberia. Sudaplatov has offered to further in integrate them into our forces, using the NKVD as a basis for a new army. The father must decide if the strength they would bring is worth welcoming barbarous wolves into his flock or if they will stay true to the word of God, even if it means risking everything he and his followers have built up. Snake or Savior. When the father knew he was in a dangerous position, Sludopotov came. When he didn't have enough soldiers to bring his message to Russia, Sludopotov came. When he didn't have the power nor will to defeat the fascist devils and atheist communists, Sludopotov came. And yet the danger has only begun. While Sludopotov may be a powerful figure, able to give much to the father, he is also a dangerous as a snake. While we use Sludopotov's connections that lead us to victory, at the same time he could be collecting his power waiting to strike. The father should be... Well, yeah, Sudopotov, however, he has not done anything wrong yet, only helping the father and his forces to victory. Will Zal Sudopotov, will he ever see victory? Perhaps Sudopotov should be used to his full extent. It appears Sudopotov's connections are only leading to benefits, so maybe there's something wrong with using him. Still, we must be aware and beware. Next up, we shall do education, mm, construction. I like the infrastructure, I really do, but meh. 
And I'll do education because we can. Why not? Basic literacy. I suppose the next one we should do is probably agriculture when we get there. So it's slowly improving. It'll get there eventually. Non-nuclear power, not really working on that. Political interference, going up by 2.5 a month, which is not bad. Ooh, by the next month, we should be at zero for development status. Political interference is not great. But hey, it's just one level below professional army, so that's not bad. A Spartan discipline would be really cool, which I know Burgundy starts with. So, Pseudopotov's men. Cast the wolves out from the flock, which is not bad. Leash the wolves. I kind of like that one. You get 50% get more organization, which is quite a bit. Cool, we're done with this side, so then come over here, and we shall do military construction 2. So if we need to build up military factories, well, we'll have the capabilities to do so. But, blessed are the peacemakers. We cannot rely on peasant militias for much longer. Our opponents are beginning to field professional armies using all the tools of modern destruction. By God's glory, we cannot fall behind in this race. The new territories are full of old NKVD officers, foreign mercenaries, and rapid nationalists. It is our goal to reshape the minds of such men. Through the power of prayer, we will convert the unbelievers, give them our blessing, for they bring peace through war. The Father himself will be met with former generals to see if they are worthy of taking a place amongst the pious, or if they deserve the judgment of the Lord in which we get the Sickly Man event. Sickly, Sickly Man. Point nine a day? Not bad, not bad. The West Russian Revolutionary Front declares war on the Anti-Communist Volunteer Guard. It must be Onega. I would hate to be, uh, Kurpichnikov right now. Destroy them. Oh, do they actually have, they have their own unique focus tree. It is an obligation. Attack and defense. Wait, can they? Mm, breaking the ice. Um, bolster the Civil Guard. Can you actually, like, reunify with Russia? That'd be kind of cool. Or Finland? Finnish dependence? Status of the communal fisheries. Our righteous struggle. Huh. Is that new? Maybe it is, maybe it's not. The sickly man. On a snowy, snowy clearing outside Omelon, did the army of the faithful congregate. Before them stood Father Alexander Mann, leading today's liturgy. He had donned a... Contorasin over his form fitting robes with a little small three barreled three barred <laughs> crucifix hanging to below his chest as it jingled against icy winds, yet Siberia's ga gales deterred them from little from hearing the word of God. Boots crunching snow, however, did. The father was halfway through today's at Actenia when he caught one of the soldiers trudging towards him, head hung low like a bandit waiting the executioner's axe. He set his Bible aside. What ails you, my son? he asked. The man had neared, enough so that the father could glimpse the emblem emblazoned on his ushanka. His lips pursed thin. Must be why the flock had given them their fellow a wide berth. Prokor Voikov, or Volkov, he said without prompting, NKVD. Do you wish for confession, child? A wordless nod. Then let the Lord and the Lord alone hear your sins. The words exchanged between them were lost to posterity. What the flock would forever hold to their hearts, however, was Bukharin's erstwhile thug collapsed against the father as a sobbing heap. The priest robbed circles around the frail man's back all throughout. So was a sinful man reborn. Oh. Good, good. Us, but a sin nonetheless. It appears that not all men are prepared to receive power. Several militia leaders have failed in their tasks, forsaking loyalty to the Lord in exchange for power. They threaten peasants, take extra rations, and abuse their surplus of weaponry. Sur such subversive elements had, are to face swift and immediate removal. We had higher expectations for the willingness of our people to accept this grave task of war, but the minds of the people of Siberia have yet to be fixed. Another general committee will oversee the replacement of the corrupted officers. But those who have exemplified their piety and willingness to leave this good earth and in service of the good cause. Religious deferment, we get less recruitable population factor, but we do get more politi political power, stability, or support, and research speed. So that's all in all. Pretty pretty darn guard, I'd say. Guard? Good. More agriculture. We must harvest the fields. Work the fields. Toil in the fields. We must, 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 must. Let's see. Agriculture's right here. 2.25, so that'll help us out. We saw that one a little earlier. Oh, boy. Well, I guess I did it, and uh, they're not fighting the Finns. The Finns. Oh, Karl Lennark Osik. No focus sweep, but that's okay. But a sin nonetheless. Do we have any research coming along? Nope, that's okay. Uh, a necessary sin. Armor professionalism goes down a little bit, so, so be it. May the Lord forgive us, but we are the last... Oh boy, there goes Salazar. Last lock amidst a force of wolves. The gun is a law of the land. The people of Siberia worship lead more than they do Creator. We will fix this in time, but for now, survival is the utmost priority. Arming the citizens' militias will be followed by a general committee, consisting of high commanders and local peasant leaders. The committee will analyze our situation, set research goals, and help coordinate villages for the creation of new munitions plants. God bless our holy task. Absolutely. Slash, spend more. 
3.5 billion, I know it's a lot, I know it's a lot, but we have to spend, spend, spend to get more political power, as well as make more civilian factories. Because honestly, our equipment levels are doing really, really well. Except for planes, but you know what, that, that always happens. Artillery's looking pretty good. Guns, we'll definitely need more guns where we're headed. Fighters, close air support, <clears throat> all needed. All super, 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 super needed. Uh, go ahead and train too. We could use better units for now. <clears throat> Point nine six. We're roughly one a day. Not bad. And actually, we're gonna have research done here soon as well. Mm, cool. Airland strikes, and then we shall do vertical envelopment. Even though we can't really use this that well, that's okay with me. Hey, fifty. Construction, scientific research, facilities. Slightly increases GDP, which is okay. Weekly manpower is not bad. Research facilities. I suppose we might as well. Mm. Oh, that is industrial equipment. You know what? Let's do prior to military industrial development. I almost never do that, but if that helps our in industrial equipment, we'll do that. Why not? And force humanity. We get less attack. Minus 15%. Oh, my goodness. Although we must sin to survive, it is imperative that we do not abandon the soul. God hath commanded his flock to not murder. We do not destroy life out of malice, hate, or envy. Our work is necessary, a fact that some people tend to mold to shape their own narratives. The general committees will focus on reshaping the minds of the militias to be forgiving of the enemy. Russia shall not arise from the ashes by killing its own. Only through forgiveness can we rebuild. Military supervision. Right now, what are we on? Economy, social, military laws. A conscription, a women, military supervision. We are military policing right now, which we get minus, plus 5% attack, minus 5% war support, and leader experience gain goes quite, quite down. Total supervision means we lose basically 20% division attack, which is so much. We get a lot more experience gain, though, for our leaders, and more war support. So, I don't think I've ever really chosen a, a nation that does that. But cool. Now, this hurts our civilian factories. Conversion cost goes up. We get more military factory construction speed for 45 days, which I'm not going to do since I think we already have enough for now. So, But we do get more industrial equipment and a military factory and increase our GDP. So, all in all, there's pros and cons. It is what it is. Six, hey, look, annual growth, 6.4%. The poverty one is so good to choose for more growth. I love it, love it, love it, love it. Love it like our God. But it's not our God, no. God is only our, our only God. So he who can keep a cool head during the harshest trials is truly blessed. The Lord recognizes the sacrifices we make, but does not forgive infringements on his holy law. There shall be no slaying, no murder, for that is the, for the godless. All of Russia is our domain, stolen by our forces of the darkest hour. Our war is, in fact, a holy struggle for the soul of the nation. Salvation comes to those who take it. With a heavenly blessing, we shall not die in vain. We even lose more attack. Ooh, we go down to basic training? Oh, that sucks. That really sucks that we actually lose stuff. Uh, we should probably focus a little bit on artillery, so this way our attack, no matter how gimped it might be, can still hit pretty hard. We got all the war support that we need. We got all the stability that we need. Religious... Deferment, huh? Hey, more political power gain. Okay, cool. And integrated military, minimal... Oh, we're on minimal training. Oh, we go to basic training. Wait. Okay, so we don't go down. We actually go back up, which is actually probably very good, which helps our training out more. So basically, we get 5% more organization. We get 5% more attack, technically. Uh, we get personal cost. Cost modifier goes up, which is unfortunate. We get more defense. Better minimum training. Well, actually... Not better. We get worse minimum training levels. 30% better division training time. Mobilization speed goes down by 100%. Oh, that actually hurts our monthly army professionalism. Holy cow. Minimum training actually hurts you quite a bit. I don't like that. So now, actually, this is rapidly improving. At 8 a month, yes, please, an army of the faithful. The father preaches selfishness. Selfi selfishness. And as the priests obey, after all, how can a true man of God sit behind the front lines while his children risk life and limb in defense of the church? The priests must be prepared to fight along his people, fortunately. Most priests are also devout followers of the Father, so their loyalty is assured. Naturally, not all priests are fit for active duty. The elderly shall be advised to report spiritual support, planning services alongside the general staff, and organize village defenses. We get better supply consumption, better defense, reinforce rate, minimum training levels. Yes, yes, yes. And let's take a look at how badly we hit the GDP. Oh, God, that hurts. Oh, that hurts. Man. Being holy is costly. Horizontal industrial organization? Well, why not? So after this, it's time to discuss Sudalpatov. Political power, Sudalpatov's laws. Ooh, that has hurt us with more money. Leash the wolves. So hold on. So we've got to figure out. We can cast out the wolves in which we lose the motorized division template. Which is actually okay since I think... Did we, we might have killed that one off. Actually, yeah, it was only one division, whatever. 
But I do like I like this one quite a bit. I'm only going to choose one of these though. Discipline creates holiness. We get more daily political power, security service, more stability, civilian intelligence. But that costs more, so I don't want to do that one. Or we do create an intelligence agency, but you can do that anyways. Stability, political power. Yeah, and so, so many could be saved. Yeah, that's okay. So we'll probably do leash the wolves. So, I mean, yeah, we might as well. During the wars to unify Siberia, Sudapotov's men refused to allow or follow the father's prohibitions on unnecessary violent killing, but they were also the most effective soldiers fighting for a cause. Perhaps the Lord sent them to us so that we may redeem these men by working with them. After all, the cause they fight for is righteous, even if they themselves are not. By reminding them of the teachings of God and the Father, we may be able to persuade them to act in a more Christian manner towards their foes. Even if they disregard father's men's words, his mission is too important to risk failure by casting away his allies. If only those allies were more respectful of God's laws. So we're only going to do one. We should be okay if we only do one here, right? And if it's not okay, well, then you'll see me fade in, fade out, and uh, fix this a little bit. Research facilities. Uh, construction speed is not bad. 15% is not bad. I almost never choose that, though. But when we have things that we can improve our stuff here, we must do it. It's already August 1st, 68. Love it, love it, love it. And next up, we're going to get even more political power when we do our other stuff here. Do we have more research coming along? In about two months, we'll have better artillery. I can't believe we're making such god-awful artillery. Uh, not god-awful, but uh, devil-awful. De uh, devil is awful. He may be a little bit strong, but he's awful. Yes. Uh, we'll save this one for the last. Sudapotov's connections. In his time working for Yagoda, Sudapotov worked with many talented individuals. These talents were specifically focused on what is politely called asymmetric warfare. Subterfuge, sabotage, assassination, etc. Father men find these people morally reprehensible. They hide in themselves in shadows and strike without mercy, denying their foes a chance to surrender and repent. Uh, and not caring for how many innocents they may hurt or kill as long as they can accomplish their goal. Their methods are unchristian, but there's no denying how effective they are. Sudapotov, Sudapotov has offered to use their talents against our enemies. Fighting in such a dishonorable way is contrary to everything the Father teaches, but if we are to unite Russia as Christ has commanded, such tactics may just be necessary. Only 4.5 billion avenue deficit. The Russo finished ceasefire seized. The perfidious Finns escaped justice again. Ah, they had to demobilize here. That sucks for them. Oh, well, that's not us. Yeah, we're we are really hurting us. Recruit former NKVD. His offer to recruit more of his former colleagues. This will raise another NKVD motorized brigade. His influence is currently medium. Well, that's where it's going to stay. Hiring foreign instructors? Oh, yes, please. Yes, yes, please. It adds more to the debt, but that's okay. Debt is but a number. From what I learned when playing with Glenn, if you hit a high enough debt number, at least at the time of this recording, probably... The debt becomes zero. If you go over like a trillion, some, two trillion, if you go over two trillion, the debt becomes zero and God will bless you then. Even more so. Really maximizing this out. So, we shall do... One does not live by power alone. Father Man did not create the divine mandate as a path to power. He founded it on the orders of God Almighty to pull the Russian people out of darkness and back into his light. God is guiding our path, and as long as we do not stray from his teachings, he shall not steer us wrong. We do not need to resort to trickery and espionage as our opponents do. We shall meet them as our friends or as enemies, honorably and righteously, knowing that we stand with the Lord and he will not fail us. Whether he succeeds or fails in his task, Father Man will go forward with a clean conscience, knowing that he has conducted himself as any good Christian should. Sudopotov's offer is alluring, but the temptation of power is the oldest temptation of all and the father will not be led astray which we, we get stability which we don't really need we do get more political power which is something we could use anything here that increases anything else weekly manpower Ooh, hold on now let's do some math here and by math I mean just some basic calculations 60 days is about eight and a half weeks so we'll say eight weeks eight weeks times 750 that's about 6,000 manpower so that's not bad that's kind of okay but it's not bad and I like the consumer goods, but we lose stability, which is okay. Infrastructure, I like the infrastructure quite a bit. And get more resource efficiency again, which is okay. I like the construction speed, plus 15% quite a bit. Weekly manpower. Uh, well, you got 5,000 manpower. Actually, this one gives you more manpower. You do lose stability with that one, and you do get stability with this one. Ooh, you know what? I almost never choose this. I don't want to use the civilian factories, but consolidate seat resource corporations. Corporations. Let's choose that one, because I almost never choose that. Because we can. That'll be cool. Pol political interference, huh? Cool. 30 days left. And we're almost done with artillery, which will be great, great, great. Are we done training here, everyone? 
Decrease in poverty thanks to our greater poverty relief efforts as well as expansion of our civilian economy. The poverty rate has increased significantly enough to be notable internationally. As the government congratulates itself for its efforts, the first official state projections on the impact of this improved popular prosperity are filed, stating that the people are able to access superior goods, economic opportunity shall be greatly increased, and our workforce shall be capable of greater and greater feats. We get less healthy population, but we get more recruitable population factors, stability, war support, construction speed, research output, output period, and more taxable people. I love taxing people. I don't like paying taxes, and now it's only 4.47. That was not as much of an increase as I would have liked, but uh, that's just me. But hey, it is what it is. Decrease the poverty. Ooh, how about support stuff? Yeah, we could do that, but let's get some actual trucks from the 1950s. <laughs> that might be good to do. And we show Sudapatov's laws. When Father Men created the Divine Mandate, it was a loose network of villages and communes scattered over thousands of kilometers in the vastness of Siberia. There was little central authority, and the Father counted on the faithful to do their part and keep the peace. Now that Eastern Siberia has been unified, Sudapatov has begun calling for Father Men to increase his control. The Father agrees that a formal police force to maintain public order is necessary, but Sudapatov wishes to go several steps further. He asked for that his men be authorized and enforce discipline in the villages and communes of the Mandate. This would be a step back towards the tyranny of the NKVD, but it may be a necessary step. There are many trials, oh boy, to come, and a strong centralized state may be necessary to overcome them. More stability, but we do get more costs, which is not good. And eh, pray they survive. Pray, pray, pray we must. Nice. National service programs. You know what? I'm gonna do this one because I want less consumer goods. We lose stability, but I don't care. It doesn't even help or helps with the GDP. But I want to make faster. Make faster. Actually, do. Oh, there it warp. Cool. Now, this hurts us with consumer goods. We lose some consumer goods. It slightly increases the GDP when removed. Revitalizes. When removed, you lose stuff. But for now, we get the consumer goods bonus, which is okay. It's not great. Now, let's finish off our air land auction with air to ground task forces. Very good. So now we're just kind of waiting for this. We could recruit this guy, but now. <laughs> Every saint has his devil whispering sweet temptations in his ear. Invest in construction. We could do that weekly manpower. Eh. Better research facilities. The money keeps rolling on in. And our scientists are loving it. With the budget of our research and development program skyrocketing, we've built a new research facilities and upgraded our old laboratories. This won't just allow us to be safer when working, but handle more dangerous materials and ensure greater amounts of research to be done. Across the private and public sector, new technologies from military to civilian uses are being developed. Of course, this is good for more than just scientists. Now, citizens will be able to enjoy the boon of research, and economic bonuses like new industrial technology will keep the economy moving. We'll get back to the schools eventually. Lose political power to get more research speed, which is not bad. Not bad. Ooh, slightly increases GDP, construction speed, 35. You know what, screw it, we'll do it anyways. Build, 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 build. We gotta mitigate the GDP de stuff. The debt, the deficit. Oh my goodness. Do that there, and then do that there. Very nice. Only 110 in terms of uh, army XP, but that's okay. How much support equipment do we have? 1.2 thousand. Well, let's see. Normal infantry. Not bad, not bad. Go ahead and do that. That looks really good. Support anti-tank, support anti-air. Uh, how much anti-tank do we have? Anti-tank wise, we don't have that much, so we probably shouldn't put it on. Yeah, that would probably pretty drastically increase it. Yeah, it would not be very good. That's okay. Pseudopatals. Laws. And this probably went up just slightly more, but whatever. Uh, discipline increased holiness, which looks cool, but nah. There's only one judge. Suleplatov may mean well, but he's misguided. His vision is clouded by his years in the NKB, an organization that fostered a cult of paranoia and authoritarianism. And the mandate there will be no secret police and midnight knocks at the door. God is the only one fit to judge his children. And we shall leave the matter of judgment for him in his infinite wisdom. We shall maintain good order and Christian ethics throughout our nation, but we do not need the authoritarian methods Suleplatov has called for to this. Local police and security forces will be more than enough to keep the peace and make sure that God's commandments are heeded by his people. Absolutely. There is... There's only one judge. And you know what? Let's go here. And begin making the thickest godly divisions. You know what? Godly. Inspired by his holy word. Godly 40s. In which we shall throw on elites. We call for the commoners. There is no elite. There is no light infantry. There's all but infantry. This actually costs five. For some reason, I thought it said six. Cool. If I convert half of you guys to godly 40s. You know what? I don't like the word godly. No, we're not godly. No, no, no. 
We're whole. -y. Holy 40s. There we go. Now that probably hurt our equipment a little bit, right? Oh, they definitely hurt our anti tank, which is not good. That's alright, though. Anti tank needs a slight boost, and that's okay. There you go. Ooh. Well, that'll come along. No worries. No worries. 46 factories, of course, not enough. Don't look at the depth. Just by the number, and await judgment. For many months, Sulpatov now has sent various requests and demands to the Father Men, seeking to reform that divine mandate to fit his vision and entrench his influence. His suggestions have been logical, as well reasoned and effective, but they clash with the Father's morals and teachings of God Almighty. After months of intensifying conflict between the two, Sulpatov's demands have finally stopped coming in. It appears a new equilibrium has been reached. Either Sulpatov has finally accepted men's teachings and realized the error of his old ways, or the Father has succumbed to old or enough to his temptations that he's ready to ready to escalate his campaign to reform Siberia to the next level. Only the Lord which knows which shall come to pass. For the people of Russia, time will have to tell. Hopefully, that was okay that we chose, you know, one. Ooh, import heavy machinery. Yes, please. He has medium influence. Ho hopefully, we'll do okay. I really hope that we do okay there. So, please don't hurt us too much, men. Not too much, please. 0.9 a day, not bad, not bad. When's the next research done? In about two months. That's not bad. Construction-wise... It's not fast enough. December 29th. In about a week, we'll have another civilian factory. Military austerity. Goodbye. Go up. Wow. Almost 5 billion. Oof. We need way more civilian factories to minimize this. Of course, once we take out the Siberian free territory, our GDP will rise drastically. So, I'm kind of hoping for that. Worker training. Oh, you betcha. Oh, Chet, you betcha. Now, I don't mind making... Civilian factories, but, or infrastructure, infrastructure, I should really say. But two at a time, two at a time. So I want two civilian factories at, at minimum at all times going on. Prepare for war. Cold dead is unfortunately going by the recent actions. It seems that all hopes of peace with the free territory have been dashed. In an announcement from Novo Sibirsk, the central Siberian state has a claim that we are an illegitimate state that follows, stands in the way on the path to reunify all of Russia. Following the declaration of hostility, they have expelled all of our citizens within their borders. As the military starts to mobilize within the clouds of the circle of the horizon, it seems that our conflict of interest shall be settled on the battlefield rather than at the negotiating table. And we shall be waiting justice, and we are now done with our focus street for now until we take out those unholy, heathenistic... Siberian free territory. So be it. Infrastructure. We get less war support. We get political power. We need that one. Normally I don't like choosing this, but we could probably use more military factories for now. Happy January 2nd, 1969, though, my friends. You know, we'll do that one. Why not? Awaiting judgment. Oh, bonus to recon. I like that one. So, Father, it is very good to see you, Slutopatov said as Alexander Men stepped through the door into the small room. Have a seat. There are some things I wish to talk about. Men sat down in the small chair, saying coldly, I believe it is I who have something to say first, Slutopatov. Men paused, watching Slutopatov's reaction. Are you betraying me, Pavel? What? I would never. Where are you getting these ideas? S said, unaware men knew of his spot. This was supposed to go to the other way around. Has he, had he miscalculated? Well, it appears your NKV div divisions are taking your orders, but not mine, men said. You have also been collecting funds, and my generals are reporting weapons disappearing. I believe you gained too much power, Slutopatov. Chadwick, Clovis, come in here, please. Your temptations have failed to turn me, and you have betrayed no one but God himself. Men stood up to leave Sudipatov to his faith. Sudipatov dropped to his feet of men, begging, Wait, I repent, I repent, please. I was just trying to give us a chance at actually reunifying Russia. I promise I remain loyal, please. Men looked down at the man at his feet. He was sure Sudipatov was hiding something. Was he really repenting, or was it a lie? Still, men was always supposed to forgive, wasn't he? Would it be hypocritical to let Sudipatov rot in some cell? Let him go. It's not the way of the father to let a repentant be jailed for the rest of his life. A grand showdown. Uh, if you want to read about that, go right ahead. This is, let us see who will stand tall in the end. This is basically when we chose the prepare for war decision here that Siberia instantly took against us. So, not really super important to read that one. Increases GDP. I like GDP, but we might want to save more of our political power for more regional developments. So, who's next? Literacy is doing really quite well. Outdated research is doing a little okay. Agriculture is slowly going up as well. Poverty is rapidly improving at 5.5, so we'll, that'll be a while, though. Manufacturing, it will take a while. Nation industrial base is getting closer. Getting closer. As well as army professionalism. Nine a month is not enough. Never enough. An experienced industrial base would be very bueno. And next we shall do... Oh, Michael Harrington in Nog... What the? This is a, I think this is the first time. At 69... Democratic Socialists. This is the first time I think I've actually seen Harrington win the elections. Can a specter of poverty finally be slain? 
He's a democratic socialist. Bruh, this is the very first time. I'm sure this is the very first time I've ever seen Harrington win. Holy crap. I like his hair. I really do. That's kind of wild. End of the voodoo. I can, oh my goodness. I need to play as Harrington sometime. The carelessness of Bennett. For the end of voodoo economics. This will make us fiscally whole again. Real in the military. Our revenues will increase. Let it run its course. Tone back the trade. Bro. Whoa. Cross the country. Meet with activists. The other America. Tackling the causes. Tackling the efforts and issues. America for all. Grows a little more unified and ender poverty. Cool. That's really cool. And then, of course, they had fighting tyranny since 1776, which is pretty cool. Alright, let's come down here. And third time for GDP growth. Don't mind if we do, because our debt is currently getting pretty close to our GDP. So, hmm. And we need to begin the invasion. Very good, very good, very good, very good. And let's grab some more output. Beautiful. Two lines at all time. Grease them out. Grease them out. Very good. Only 5.2 billion at a time. That's all. That's all in terms of deficit. That's all we have. Are you still training? You are barely still training, which is fine. So we probably should get ready to go to war. And we have some 40 combo with divisions, which will be very, very good. Stop training. And do we have any planes? We have a few planes. Not many, but a few. But they shall suffice for what we need. Hopefully. Education? Yes, please. Moderately increases GDP. Don't mind if we do. Ooh, uh, that does increase our GDP slightly. For 35 political power, we get about 1.9 a day. You know what? We might as well do that, right? We might as well. Slightly more GDP. We have 127 political power. Obviously, we're going to lose a lot of political power once we can, or once we're able to core the Siberian territory. So, that'd be cool. That'd be very, very cool. War on the horizon, the troops of the Free Territory are beginning to amass at our border. With the fortified bunkers and military operations at their display, the intentions are clear. War will face our nation, and we must mobilize our troops quickly if we don't wish to be overwhelmed at the front. The forces shall test our mettle, but we shall know better. Their will will break first, and our nation will triumph in the land of Russia. Absolutely. Absolutely, positively. Winner, take all. Cool. Uh, we still have 85 army XP, which is not bad. Not bad at all. We only have 159 political power, 56 factories in total, which is not bad. All right, so let's take a look here. Krasnoyarsk, hopefully we can take that. They have, oh, they have way more factories than us. They have uh, roughly about the same amount of manpower. And we actually have more divisions than them. So that's not bad. Hopefully once we can get the legacy of the Siberian planet, whatever that is, hopefully it's good. Uh, 7% consumer goods minus the production cap. Less, more factory output, efficiency gain, and production growth. Wow, that sucks. <laughs> oh, man. Hey, we're done with our land auction, though. That's pretty, uh, pretty good. The jet engines. Let's get some better infantry stuff for now. Let's make sure that we can, we do actually okay, because I've kind of neglected that so far, so. And we'll probably stop cutting down the civilian budget. And we'll probably, ooh, well, if we do this... I mean, technically, when we do increase the budget for civilian spending, you do get better consumer goods, stability, construction speed, so. And Iberia abolishes the Iberian Council. Okay, so we are def in a war defending. Can we actually just move on in? 77. Well, so far, so good. Oh, boy. Maybe not. There was a little bit of lag there. Can our men not do well? What do I told you to force the attack? Well, who are you guys down here? Force it, and you'll probably be able to win that one then. There you go. Budget boosts. Spend more. We could spend more here. Ooh, you know what? We're going to spend more. This would be one of the weird times I actually spend more so we get more attack. Losses. 11,000 versus... Wow, we actually lost more than them then. That's because we're forcing attack. Then again, once we break their divisions, we should do relatively okay. The, the Via Fani Massacre. Oh boy, in Rome, Italy. That's not good. Twenty-six thousand. They've only lost ten thousand. That is not ideal, but we'll win. Galvin has a peasantry for war. Oh my goodness. Yeah, this stuff. That's not bad. Minus twenty percent consumer goods factories. Holy cow. Encourage agricultural organization. That's fine. It's not bad. 
Alright, let's stop attacking all willy-nilly and crazy-like. Alright, so we've lost probably about 30,000. They've only lost 10,000. we got to be a little bit more smart about how we do this now. Nice. Oh. So basically, everyone's fighting now. You guys are killing each other. And then we're killing each other. And they're not really attacking me, though, which is kind of sad, but whatever. Alright, push these guys over the river. There you go. That was pretty costly, those attacks. But overwhelming force in certain areas should do relatively okay for us. Basic motorized, nice. Get some better motorized. Let's grab some more breakthrough. Yeah, breakthrough probably would help out quite a bit. Uh, temptations of sin, no thanks. Begin the invasion. I'm mean, gonna I guess. It's fine. So now we gotta be smart about this. Hmm, darn, we have to be smart about this. Darn. Good. Good. There you go. Yeah, we're just smart about it. We'll, we'll definitely make sure that they have more casualties than us. So, you guys go down there. Uh, you guys can go there too. Strike with overwhelming force. Then again, I mean, we did get like minus 20% attack or something. Or 15% or something like that. So, that's not. Oh boy. That's not good. They're actually attacking us now. Oh, god dang. Are they, like, 40 combo width or something? Oh, yeah. they they got to be 40 combo width. Holy cow. Please just don't overrun my soldiers. That would not be very good. That would not be very good at all. That'd be good. Help them out. Help them out. They take our territory? We'll take theirs. 53,000 losses versus 35,000 of our own. That's not bueno. Anything else? Nope. Not winning yet, but we might be able to win here. Peace conference. Oh, oh wow, that took a while for it to kill off Scotland. Holy cow. I'm going to defeat Scotland, but that was, took quite a while. Why are we not doing so well? It's because of our attack. It's not very good. Well, maybe. Hold on. First unification. Cool. Uh, what is wrong with us? I'm glad it did the military spending thing. We should be doing relatively okay, but these guys are pretty god darn tough. Still attacking us. A, we're holding out. We're holding out, sort of. They really want to attack us there, huh? So be it. Good. Let them attack us. Let them fail against us. Oh yeah, they're probably going to win there. That's fine, whatever. So, plenty of manpower. They only have 71 factories. Not bad, not bad. We're actually probably pretty evenly matched with these guys. No upgrades, no upgrades. That's fine. As long as they can't break our defenses, that's what really matters here. Alright, you guys got to attack here. There you go. Smash them out. Smash them, smash them, smash them. Do they have air experience? No. Why are we all the way up? Just do this one. That's so much better. There we go. Hopefully we'll be doing okay there. Yemen declared war on Yemen. Good. Civil war in Yemen. And stability in the Middle East. Oh, I never heard of that before. Never, 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 never. Oh, crap. They're actually trying to push through here. They're trying to cut this guy off. How dare you. Oh, you're actually defeated. That sucks. No, that's the case. You know what? I'm going to have you retreat then. You hold. You and you. You might be able to attack here. Maybe. You do well. Just don't get us cut off. They're not moving, so. Holy crap. How are you... These guys are strong. Yeah, 40 combo width. The AI loves, loves, loves 40 combo width. There's no point even trying to fight then without 40 combo widths. Holy crap. That is insane. But they are taking quite a few losses, hopefully, with this as well. There goes that auto-saving. Takes forever. They have taken more casualties than us. Yeah, maybe we should really focus on producing more weapons and stuff. Wait, they actually beat us here too? Are you kidding me? Yeah, uh, at this point, I don't care. You know what? Everyone here... 
you gotta become 40 combat with. We gotta match them. We're out of we're out of pretty much everything now, but that's just something we gotta do. So be it. Instruction in Oman. So be it. Don't lose. Don't lose. Don't lose. Don't lose. What the hell are you doing? Get down there. Just don't get cut off. That's the most important thing. 44, 43. I'd rather have you die here. You're not that strong, actually. You're only 20 combat with, so. And man, these guys are weak, weak, weak. That's okay. Propaganda. Yeah, get more stability. Why not? Wowzers. As long as we don't get encircled. We don't really need to focus on the north as much as the south. I think the south would take a Camarobo and Novo Sabiris because that'd be good. And there it goes. Spain. No, we have more divisions than them, no. But that doesn't mean they're any good. Yep, Spain is Battle Royale mode. If you guys actually win here, you might be able to. Even though you guys are pretty darn weak. We'll make their enemy weaker. The Iberian War. Is in a war? There's no winners or losers. Only victims. There is Dacus Awa. I still have plenty of manpower, though, which is not good. I hope they're running out of equipment, though. Good, 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 good. Hold all for now. Hold all. Because I wanted to strike here, but they're actually looking sort of weak in that area, which is fine. Ooh, good. Slightly more attack and breakthrough. Let's grab even more. 10% more stuff. God dang, that's a lot. Stuff. 10% more. That's not bad. Alright, where's a good place to. Oh, they're attacking us here again. Very nice. We might be able to attack over here. No, don't start losing immediately. That's not good. You should be able to break over here. Come on, guys. Come on. Good, good, good. That's a lot of political power. Because we're going to need a lot of things by the time we're done here. When we win the war. Oof. Because we've lost 107,000, they've lost 151,000, which is not bad. Early industrial robots, don't mind if we do. Grab some military construction 3. How are these guys doing? They're they're pretty much doing the same thing. They're not doing well either. Which is fine with us, because now we're looking not super bueno. Mm, okay, keep attacking, I'll see what happens. I'd like to attack here, but I don't think we'd really be able to. But we're going to end today's episode there, just because... It's gone on for about an hour. Regardless, I hope you enjoyed today's episode, guys. If you did, consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below. And I'll see you tomorrow when we will beat up the Siberian Free Territory and maybe even push for the West. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.